if you want to play, say, the biotech business, but you don't want to make a bet on any individual drug company, perhaps in part because the biotechs have only recently begun to come back from the huge thrashing they took earlier this year. We don't know if the rebound will last. Or maybe you simply don't like to play FDA roulette with development stage drug companies that can succeed or fail based on a single decision from the FDA. In that case, why not think about owning an arms supplier to the entire pharmaceutical industry? I'm talking about Quintiles, letter Q for all you home gamers, the largest contract research organization, they call them CROs, that conducts outsourced clinical trials for the drug business, among many other businesses. Not only is Quintiles the number one player in the space, but they're also the top dog when it comes to running late-stage clinical trials, where we know the pharma and biotech companies spend the lion's share of the research and development budgets so they can bring more new drugs to market. Now, Quintiles, four weeks ago, uh, they reported and they delivered a spectacular 13 cent earnings beat off a 55 cent basis on higher than expected revenues that rose 8.4 percent year over year. Uh, strong gross margins. Meanwhile, Quintiles booked the bill ratio key metric 1.27, meaning they literally have more business than they can handle right now, including a 10 billion dollar plus backlog. Hence why the company raised its full year guidance. Stocks give you a nice 15 percent gain since we spoke to the CEO last August. I think this one could have more room to run. Don't take it from me. Let's check in with Tom Pike, the CEO of Quintiles Transnational Holdings. Find out more about his business and where it's headed. Mr. Pike, welcome back to Mad Money. How are you? you. Good to see you, Tom. Have a seat. Now, I know when you came public, I said, there's a lot of crazy stuff coming public. I don't like it because they don't have staying power. But I said, sometimes you want the slow and steady wins the race. You've had a real nice move since you came public. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a good year. I think you went through a few of the numbers. We're excited about the numbers. We've been able to deliver the new business. And in our industry, a 1.27 book to bill, it's actually 1.28 average over the last six quarters is a very strong book to bill, and it implies double-digit growth. Yeah, so. and I should have said the other guys who are in the industry do not have that book to bill. I didn't want to denigrate them in your intro, but you got by far the best. Now, I want to kind of always try to get people to understand, you know, contract research organization, research, what does it mean? But you've got, you've got an interesting contract with the NFL for injury surveillance. That might be a good way to get people involved in the story. Yeah, it's interesting. We do support clinical trials, cl clinical development, all the way from phase one through phase four. But we have world-class epidemiologists. And what these people do is they really focus on trying to look at healthcare data and look at trends and make sure they're statistically valid. So the NFL has asked us to take a look at their injury data and really monitor it with them, make sure that valid conclusions are being drawn based on the data that's being put together. And they do a terrific job really trying to monitor their business. And that would be something that the Players Association would like, too. I'm sure they don't want it captive doctors just saying, hey, look, the numbers look great. Yeah, I mean, the important thing is that the data is accurate and we draw the right conclusions because you know, that's uh, like any place in medicine. Those are complicated right. decisions coming out. Now, there's a lot of, I read through the research and people are saying, well, you got to be really careful because there could be such great drug consolidation. I come back and say, I have seen dozens of companies come public and the first thing they do when they uh, get the money is they want to do research. And it's more important to look at those future companies than one or two big dogs that might be merging. That's right. I think, I think we've seen great funding of biotech over the last year continues even into this past quarter. We've had strong funding and it does come into our industry because what they're doing is they're trying to prove that their drug is effective and they do that through clinical trials. So it really comes toward our business. At the same time, most companies can't even afford to do it themselves mm -hmm. anymore. They have to outsource it, right? That's right. And the biotechs are small enough that what they want to do is leverage our resources. So you may recall we have about 950 medical doctors, 900 PhDs. We operate in 100 countries. We're in all therapeutic areas. So they can come to us and they can get that stamp of approval that Quintiles has helped them put the trial together. I know when you're a business person and you got to go to the IRS or when you're a business person, you got to go to the SEC. Uh, they look to see the name brand. They want to be sure that you're actually advised by someone that they trust, and they don't mm -hmm. like firms that they don't trust. Mm -hmm. it, when I, if I use Quintiles, I have to presume that somebody at the FDA says, okay, at least it's Quintiles, so we're okay. The thing's going to be set up well. Yeah, it's, it's always hard to speak for the FDA or any regulatory right. body, yeah. but we do have a very good relationship with them. For instance, we hosted top statisticians from all of the major pharmaceutical firms. Our guys facilitated meetings, talked about how to deal with missing data, high responding populations, you know, these mm -hmm. types of issues. And the FDA was present and uh, 
you know, was really a partner in trying to make sure the industry moves forward. Oh, one last thing people tell me to ask the uh, research people that you did a uh, secondary and that went very well. And then you bought 3.3 million shares from TPG, which is a very fine outfit recently. Um, and, and people were surprised. Why wasn't that part of the secondary? And is that something we should worry about? Yeah, when we went through the process, we're, our, we are private equity owned. Right. We're still a controlled company at this point. And essentially, the secondary was very successful for our investors overall. But we had a little extra cash on the books, and we think it's very important to use our cash effectively. And we could create a very effective transaction. TPG had a fund that was open in 2003, intended to have a 10-year life. Mm -hmm. And so that they didn't have pressure on those shares, we were able to take care of that and create a win for the investors. I got it. Okay, that makes a ton of sense. It certainly is good because you shrink. Drink the stock is good. That's right. You obviously have enough cash to be able to do it. Most new companies do not. Okay, that's Tom Pike, CEO of Quintiles Transnational Holdings, letter Q. Recommended it right out of the chute because it's got a great business model and it's the leader and it's not that expensive versus where it was when I remember it in the old days before they did this reconfiguration. After the break, I'll try to make you more money.